Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. Today we are talking about series 2 where we are discussing triangles. This is episode number 5 and friends today's topic is basic proportionality theorem or sometimes known as Thales theorem. Let's dive right into it. Now once a very famous Greek mathematician named Thales, he gave a universal truth about triangles. What do we mean by the word universal truth? Universal truth means nothing but which is a fact which is always accepted as true everywhere in the world. Something like let's say sun rises from the east direction. Sun rises from the east and sun sets in the west. We know that no matter where you are in the world, this fact is always true. So it's, it's always, always true. So that's what is called as a universal truth. So Thales, what did he say about the triangles? So this is what he said. He said in any two equiangular triangles, if you draw any two equiangular triangles, then the ratio of any of the two corresponding sides will be always, always equal. So now we will look into what does it mean. But this is what is called as the basic proportionality theorem. Basic proportionality theorem you can relate to proportional because we are dealing with the ratio of sides. So you can kind of relate in your mind that way. Basic proportionality theorem, the word proportionality, you know, you can think of that being referring to the ratio. Ratio of the sides, right? And also this is known as Thales theorem in the honor of the Greek mathematician named Thales. So now, in order to understand this, let's understand what do we mean by equiangular triangles? So what is an equi what are equiangular triangles? So first thing, first, there are two triangles involved. We are not talking about one equilateral triangle or anything of that sort. We are talking about two triangles, number one. And number two, the corresponding angles in the two triangles must be equal. So this corresponding angles must be equal. So first, we are talking about two triangles. And second, this absolutely must be true, corresponding angles. Because the word equiangular, you know the, the word equi means equal. And angular means angles. So you have equiangular, equal angles. Now let's take a look at some, uh, you know, some triangles where uh, we can actually draw equiangular triangles, right? So one way we can draw equiangular triangles could be like this. You draw two separate triangles. In this case, we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. If it is given that these two triangles are equiangular triangles, what does it mean? We just saw that the all corresponding angles must be equal. So angle B, and what is the angle corresponding to angle B? It's angle D, sorry, angle E. Similarly, for angle A, what is the angle which corresponds to angle A? It is angle D. So it means that angle B must be equal to angle E. Angle A must be equal to angle D. And angle C must be equal to angle F. In other words, if it is given that triangle ABC and DEF are indeed equiangular. It means, what it means is angle A must be equal to angle D. Angle B must be equal to angle E. Angle C must be equal to angle F. All of these angles must be absolutely equal. Only then we call these two triangles equiangular triangles, right? Or conversely, if these angles are all equal, then we say these two triangles are equiangular. Now, there is another way to draw equiangular triangles, something like this. And the reason I wanted to show you this shape is that here we have a triangle, we have two triangles in one triangle. And what I mean by that is simply this. Right? In this case, clearly you have triangle AEF, a smaller triangle, and then angle ABC, the bigger triangle. Just wanted to highlight to you that in, in a shape like this, in, a figure, in this figure, 
you still have two triangles right so how do you visualize in your mind how do you see the two triangles well you can always visualize them like this so what we have drawn is we have just made the triangle AEF dotted line here and have just taken it out and showing it separately here AEF so think about it this way so the triangle AEF can be drawn separately as triangle AEF and then you are left with triangle ABC right so for triangle ABC we can make a dotted line uh, and then we can represent triangle ABC as a separate triangle like this so essentially I have triangle AEF and triangle ABC I can think about them as two separate triangles but they are kind of put together into one figure here instead of having two separate triangles shown separately they are basically shown together right so again just to get back to our you know the concept of equiangular triangles if it is given that triangle AEF and triangle ABC are equiangular right it will mean angle E must be equal to angle B and angle F must be equal to angle C or in other words here this is angle E and this is angle B and this is angle F and this is angle C and notice that angle A whatever the value of angle A is right this is actually common in both the triangles angle A is common in uh, triangle AEF and ABC so friends just wanted to highlight to you that equiangular triangles you know or, or the basic fact that you know how you can have two triangles in one triangle it's very very important because most of the questions that you will see in this series you will not be not be sh you know shown two separate triangles instead you will be having something like this where you have to visualize very clearly in your mind that there are two separate triangles we are talking about right so just to now quickly recap so in this case if it is given that triangle AEF and ABC are equiangular so what it will mean is these angles are equal these angles are equal and this angle is common for both the triangles right now let's just take a look at what does the actual universal truth the actual theorem what does it state to understand that let's do one thing let's just draw a line AB so here I have just drawn a line uh, AB right then let's actually divide that line into equal parts so here what I have done is I have drawn let's just name it maybe we will name it P Q R S T so initially I, I had my line AB I am just dividing into equal parts so basically what we have here is each of this measure it doesn't matter how much each of these you know segments they measure so in this case let's just call it X this will be X unit long this will be X unit long X unit long X unit long X unit long so basically what we are saying is AP will be equal to PQ will be equal to QR equal to RS equal to ST and all of this is we are just breaking it down into some arbitrary unit so in this case I have written as X units so for example you can draw any length of a uh, line you know and then you can break it down you can draw any line of any, you know you can draw line AB of any length and then you may want to break it down into equal parts so I have just broken it into five equal parts one two three four five and each of them are of a particular measure it doesn't matter whether you want to have like you know one centimeter uh, units two centimeter units that is not important what is important is that we are breaking it into equal equal lengths then let's do one thing at this point let's draw a line AC again it doesn't matter what angle this is right it doesn't matter whatever angle you feel comfortable just draw just the way we drew a random line a we draw a random line AC right and now this is what we are going to do this is kind of uh, important 
So at T, right, at point T, then draw any line. So this can be, again, this angle does not matter. Draw any line at point T that intersects line AC. Let's name this. Let's name this as, um, let's call this maybe point D, where this line intersects AC. Let's call this point as D. Now what we are going to do, now we will pick any of the other points remember like we broke it into five equal parts so we will we can pick this point this point this point this point we can pick any point so let's do one thing so here we have picked point q and we want to draw a line which is parallel to line d t that means we want to have this two angles equal now remember that from our last season earlier classes if we have if we have let's do it here if we have any two lines right and if we have a transversal that cuts them and if these two angles are equal the corresponding angles are equal then we say that these two lines let's call this line l and this is line m so if and let's call this the the this line as transversal so if we have two lines line l and line m in such a way that a transversal line t cuts them and these two angles are equal then we say that l is parallel to m and this is a proof that we have done in our last season earlier class class 9 so in this case what we have done is that after remember that this angle right this angle was a random angle and when we drew this angle, we wanted to make sure that these two angles are equal. That is, this angle is equal to this angle. So, by construction, what, what do we have here? So, let's call this as point, uh, we said this is D, right? Let's call it DF. So, just now, we were looking at this, right? So, we have now two triangles, triangle A, Q, F, and A, T, D. Let's write it down here. I have got triangle, a small triangle A, Q, F. I have triangle A, Q, F, and I have triangle A, T, D, A, T, D. I have got two triangles. In these two triangles, what I have is, I have got angle A is common, right? Angle A is common, so I can say angle A is equal to angle A, or angle A is common. Angle Q in the small triangle is equal to angle T, because this is by construction, remember that. Then this angle must be absolutely equal to this angle, right? So why? Because we'll just, you know, explain that angle F must be equal to angle D. So why is that? So let's say this is this is angle A, right? And then this is angle Q. So what is this angle? This angle is nothing but 180 degree minus this minus this. Remember that sum of three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So let's call this as angle X, this is angle Y. So the value of this is 180 degree minus X minus Y. So similarly in the big triangle, triangle A, T, D in the big triangle, right? I have angle A which is common, which is X, and this angle is same as this angle. So again, this angle is nothing but 180 degree minus X minus Y. So these two angles are equal. So what do we have in these two triangles? In these two triangles, we have, these are equiangular triangles because all the corresponding angles are equal. Now, the interesting thing is, remember that we drew AB of any length and we randomly picked any unit. X can be anything, right? X can be 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter, 5 centimeter, anything. So we randomly picked some unit and we broke this length into equal parts, right? And then we drew at point T any line which is intersecting again a randomly drawn line AC, 
right? What you will notice is if you actually draw this uh, construction and if you take a ruler and if you measure it, you will notice that this measure AF, right? Let's write it here. If you measure the length AF and if you divide that by the length AD, right? You will notice that this is exactly same. These the these lengths, the, the these two the ratio, which is the length of AF divided by the length of AB, right? This will be exactly the same as AQ divided by AT. AT. This is what tails he actually realized in any two equal equiangular triangles, no matter how big or small, if they are equiangular, these ratios of corresponding sides, AF is a side, it, it's one of the sides in triangle AFQ and AD is the corresponding side in the triangle ADT. So the ratio AF by AD is equal to AQ by AT. Now AQ is nothing but x plus x, 2x, right, in our example, 2x divided by 80 is, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5x. So essentially, for in our particular example, this ratio, AF by AD, when you actually measure, you will see this ratio to be 2 by 5. So friends, this is in a nutshell what is meant by basic proportionality theorem or Thales theorem. So just to wrap it up, it means that if you have two equiangular triangles, then the corresponding sides will be always in the same ratio.